Good morning. I'm Uta Müller and I'm here with David Firth in Cape Town Valley, New Zealand. Uh, David, today is December the 27th. It seems not to be winter. No, it's not. It's not the sunniest day, but this is summer here and it's beautiful. And everywhere else in the world, well, most places in the world are very cold right now. But in here it's beautiful, sunny, sunny summer's day. Is this the reason why you came to New Zealand? <laughs> no, not quite. It's We've just had our ninth Christmas here and it's still very strange and weird for me to be in uh, the summer at Christmas time. I'm from England, the north of England, so it's cold and dark and wet, occasionally snowy this time of year. But no, it's not the reason we came. Uh, I was uh, in the marketing and advertising industry for many years and God gave me a little nudge to come to Bible school here 12 years ago. My wife and I decided to come out. Long story short, we, this is the, the center we chose to come uh, in this ministry called Torchbearers. It has 25 Bible schools around the world or centers off a Bible school. And this was the one we came to. We couldn't get any further from England. We came here for 10 weeks and obviously a seed was planted for the future. So three years later, we came, were invited to come back on staff and uh, myself as marketing director and I also uh, developed and head up the BML program which is a 10-week business ministry leadership course. So that's why we came. One of the reasons why we stay is the beautiful scenery and the lovely weather um, but it's not the main reason. But um, here's a paradise and why does Jesus need marketing? Well that's a good point. People want to come to New Zealand anyway because it's a beautiful country it's a long way away and those in north america and europe seem to want to explore new zealand and australia in the last few years with some movies being made out here uh, all the lord of the rings movies and some of the narnia movies many other movies actually uh, new zealand has become more interesting and getting more exposure to the rest of the world so this is a great place to have a center that offers short-term Bible school, which is mainly aimed at, um, say, 18 to 23-year-olds, looking at taking time out before they're engaged in full-time uh, work or study or family life. But does Jesus need marketing? Well, he doesn't. He needs clear and effective communication, which uh, in old school terms is marketing. It's just communicating clearly and effectively what we do here which is take, uh, we provide an opportunity for students to take time out of their life and really focus on studying the Bible. And we believe firmly the Bible reveals the person of Jesus Christ, points to him. Um, he is there on every page. You've got to look harder on some than others. And we really love the fact that we get to uh, help young men and women and older men and women to grow in their faith, understand the reality of who the person of Jesus Christ is and the difference he makes in their life. So it, it's, there's nothing special about this place. It's beautiful, but there's nothing special. There's nothing transformational about this place. It's Christ. We, we desperately encourage students when they leave here to remember that it's Christ in them that's the hope of glory, not Christ in Cape and Ray, not Christ in New Zealand. So we get a privileged opportunity to to spend time teaching and training and showing them that truth. We hope that they then go on and live it elsewhere, but there are worse places to spend six or 12 months. And this is a fantastic setting in a beautiful country. And do you find marketing principles in the Bible? It's funny, I wouldn't have said yes 10 years ago. I was working in a, a large advertising agency in the north of England. And although I had my moral understanding of what was right, I would draw a line between my faith and how I would operate as a professional because I'd, I'd convinced myself things like business is business and to be successful I've got to be sharp and aggressive. I find that if, if we look at what marketing really is, which is clear and effective communication, then whether people like it or not, the best example of marketing ever was Jesus Christ because he was the best communicator to ever walk the planet. He knew how to speak to children and kings and uh, servants and poor people, um, women, uh, 
young people. He, he spoke differently to different groups. He knew how to communicate. He knew how to use the things around him. He talked about the, the vine and the branches. He talked about the temple and the stones. He talked about the dust on the earth. So he was a brilliant communicator and that's really what marketing is. It's communicating well and clearly it's become quite corrupt in, in some way and a lot of people see marketing as tricking people into buying things that they don't need. Well, he had life, he was offering life. So he had to clearly and effectively communicate that. And to a degree, that's what we feel our um, calling is, is to clearly and effectively communicate and present who Jesus is. Because the world's lost its mind a little bit and sees Jesus as something to do on a Sunday or like the soccer team, you pick the one you support. Jesus is the only guy ever to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's an incredible claim, and that actually rocked my faith as a young man. I had to realize if for someone to say that, that needs looking at, because it's either nonsense or it's true. Um, and for him to say, I am life, meant that if I don't know Jesus, then I don't really experience life in its fullness. So that's one of the things that motivates me and excites me that we can find clear evidence of how to communicate well clearly and effectively in scripture not just through the life of jesus but primarily through the life of jesus so yeah i would say and people don't like it but jesus was a marketeer but i think it's a difference uh, jesus didn't communicate with a web uh, or uh, with a tv or radio no he didn't <clears throat> um he did say follow me so maybe he meant on instagram no, I didn't. <laughs> One of the things I, uh, I love about reading scripture is you find that although the medium might change, the message itself is clear from thousands of years ago. The sufficiency of God in the person of Jesus Christ. So these days we communicate differently. We have different languages, different uh, platforms to speak on. I mean, I see some of these teenagers that text and they use words that I don't even understand and I don't consider myself too much of a dinosaur but they have their own text language I have friends in America the way they talk to each other is just I almost don't understand even though it's in English so the method of communication does change um, whether it was Greek Aramaic or Hebrew that the Lord would speak to different groups in his tonality and how he would teach and talk would be different today we have PowerPoint we have videos we have people teaching with just handwritten notes. We have um, vid, uh, yeah, web and stuff that can, can be done digitally. People can learn online. So there's lots of different methods that people can learn and lots of different ways that they can hear about um, places like this. But the, the message itself shouldn't change and doesn't change. We have a huge opportunity in North America and Europe and Asia to tell people about this uh, program in New Zealand because those are the thinking of traveling can come and um, and experience uh, the culture as well as learning here but that's one of the benefits of torchbearers we have these 25 centers around the world uh, where people can come and do short-term study and if they've already got a particular passion for a place they really want to go to Germany or they want to go to Costa Rica to find that there's a torchbearer center there um, that can be the nudge to get them there because they already maybe wanted to go and see the, the country. Of course, before the web, before social media, uh, these centers totally relied on word of mouth. And they still do to a large degree. Probably 80% of our um, students around the world at different Torchbearer centers, they come from personal recommendation from another student, from somebody that's been to one of our centers or go back and tell them about it. And we consistently find that statistic to be true. So we, we do things on social media, we run conferences, we go to events and exhibitions, we have web and email uh, tools at our disposal, but the thing that has the biggest impact is students coming back from here saying, that's a phenomenal place to go, phenomenal place to grow, and we recommend it. And that's the thing that brings more students than anything else. So despite the media around the world changing, it's our, our students that are our best adverts, our best communication tools for drawing more students to our centers. What's your function? Uh, do you create flyers? Or do you um, do the web design? Me personally? Yes. So uh, in 2010, 
Um, we, we'd been here for a year and a half, but in 2010 I was asked to go to Colorado to work with Chris Thomas, um, who's our general director, and a, a gentleman by the name of Brad Kearns, who's now on staff at Townhof in Austria, who had developed what uh, they called Communication and Development Team within Torchbearers International. And although they developed the concept, there wasn't really any staff for it. So I was recruited to, uh, as a Communication and Development Manager, uh, working under Brad and with Chris, to develop strategy and implementation of these strategies, the tactical side of what we were going to do to communicate the message of Ministry of Torchbearers, partly because Major Thomas, um, 2007, went home to be with the Lord. So that's nine years ago now. Um, and uh, until then, he was traveling the world, telling people about this ministry and kind of topping up the cup. So the overflow would be the students coming to the center. So with him not being around, uh, Chris Thomas recognized the need for this. So I was recruited to do that. And the last um, nearly seven years, that's been part of my role. Although I'm based here in New Zealand, um, I spend a bit of time in Colorado and in Canada and in Europe, our other centers supporting them. My function for torchbearers is to um, look at ways that we can effectively use the resources limited as they are to get the word out, tell people about what we do. We're not trying to sell Bible school spots. We want to just clearly and effectively communicate this ministry to those that might be interested in coming. Um, and, and yeah, we do. We do uh, printed promotion publication. Um, in, we do some e-newsletters. We have an alumni area now that we're developing and uh, some thousands of email addresses that we have for people that have signed up to be part of our alumni association. We run conferences across North America. We like to do some in Europe. Um, and then we have uh, presence on social media uh, and then we do very stuff with web and email and then we've got some great resources some great um, talented people in our team produce fantastic videos and photography and social media posts that really do uh, scratch where it's itching with the, the communities that we're looking to communicate with that it, it really sits nicely with them and, and uh, that's that's an area we need to develop more um, again, to emphasize that the message mustn't change, but the medium can in which we communicate it. So we're learning lots of new social media platforms popping up every day that we've got to consider whether we're involved in. Uh, right now, Facebook and Instagram um, limited on Twitter, but we'll keep looking and seeing what's appropriate for this ministry. Uh, not everything is, a, is the best use of our time and resources because we have a small team working with me. There's another four or five dotted around, most of them in Colorado, but we have a small team and uh, we do our best with the, the time and the energy that we've got. And are you able to do this, to do this here because um, I think the internet is here very slow? Yes, <coughs> the internet here is different to most of the places in the world and, and a lot of our students are North American and, and even Europeans, they are used to unlimited um, high capacity internet. New Zealand is one of the few areas it's a little bit, um, I don't want to say backward, it's uh, not quite there yet and there's all sorts of initiatives underway to try and make it better in New Zealand. Um, for us it's very difficult because uh, we have a, a, a great need with the staff and the students that are here. We're rural, we're in the middle of nowhere and although technology is getting better we're still not as nowhere near the North American and European expectations. So we try and be clear in our um, publications, our documentation that people know when they come here it's limited. We've got fast food restaurants and libraries and things and coffee shops that do offer free internet and our students can go and benefit from that. But maybe another two or three years we'll uh, have some sort of decent cabling in here so we can really uh, maximize uh, our capacity uh, or yeah, uh, provide the service that we would like to for our students that come here. But it, so it can be challenging. But then 10 years ago or however long we didn't even have internet so we, we mustn't grumble too much. And what is when you need a new equipment and new software? Do you get it here? Yeah, New Zealand is, I always say the culture is broadly a mix of American and British, although there's lots of other uh, nationalities here too. Um, and it does seem to have an awful lot of what the rest of the world has. Because we're in the middle of nowhere, um, globally, it can be a little more expensive to get things here, some things. 
But no, despite what some think, New Zealand is very well resourced and most equipment and software um, is readily available. And even the uh, international uh, companies, they ship here, even if they don't have a presence here, they can ship here. Uh, and Australia, again, they've got 20 plus million people. We only have four and a bit million people here. So it's not big compared to uh, other countries around the world. But we, most things are readily available. And as I say, most of my team are actually based, <coughs> excuse me, in North America anyway. So there's only me and my assistant's been down here for a little while. But she's based in Canada. Um, so yeah, it's only me that really causes the problem. Everybody else has access to, to the US. It's the students and the guests that attend this center um, struggle a little bit with the, the limited internet. Uh, abilities. And what do you do uh, when you need a new book about marketing from Amazon? Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of marketing books because they're written by marketeers and um, I've met lots of very wealthy marketeers but I, I've also met quite a few corrupt ones. I learned very early on in the marketing world that simply telling the truth and working hard gave me a good name, a good reputation and quite a good career. And I realized that telling the truth and working hard should be normal. But unfortunately, it's an industry where that isn't always the case. So um, there are not that many people I know that are incredibly good marketeers that I would have a huge amount of trust for. Uh, that said, there are some brilliant people around the planet that have written some great books. I, the only book I'm really interested in is the Bible. <laughs> I get teased for that a lot, but when I can show people that there's incredible marketing and management and leadership and strategic principles in the Bible, then they get a little less angry with me. So, I mean, I've got some experience. I've got some great people um, around me and uh, I know this particular ministry quite well now. So we, yeah, there's still lots to learn and we mustn't be uh, ignorant or arrogant that uh, we can't learn from um, the secular world, but we've got to be careful that we keep it in balance, that we don't um, take our focus off Christ and look at worldly methods to attract people to this place. We do believe we need to be faithful and good stewards of what we have, but we don't feel we need to um, do his work for him, that he will bring those that he calls here. Um, it's finding that blend of, of looking down at the work we've got to do and keeping our eyes on him. One, one without the other can be quite ineffective. We've got to be conscious of what he's given us, but not take our eyes off him um, during the process. His, uh, Paul, when he went to Asia to preach, um, was turned away by the Holy Spirit. He had a plan and he had a purpose and he was going to do a work, but he was constantly listening to the Lord and the Lord turned him away. Abraham took Isaac up the mountain. He, he thought he was going to sacrifice him and the Lord turned him away from what he thought he was going to do. So we've got to be constantly listening and looking. There's a few things we've done which we decided we weren't going to do and then we kept looking and praying and we have done. Um, there's probably some things we, we've done that we looking back maybe we shouldn't have but uh, where we've put time or money and resources to to, to try and um, be yeah to communicate better and also our demographic is changing we get uh we're getting more students coming to our bible schools that are maybe taking time out of university or taking time out of work it used to be the 18 19 year olds were probably 70 percent of our students maybe more yeah maybe more whereas now there's a lot more coming a little later they're looking at the workplace and they're looking at university and going yeah, something's not right here. And even as Christians, they're going, I'm not seeing the Christian life lived in myself or in others. So they, they, they reach out to an organization like ours that really does proclaim what the Christian life is and show them that they can't live it themselves anyway. They were never designed to. Only Christ can live the Christian life. That's why they named it after him. So it's a, it's a wonderful privilege to be part of a ministry that really does have its eyes fixed firmly on Jesus Christ, and that's success to us. It's not about filling our centers uh, or paying all the bills or having loads of money in the bank. That's not, what we, not why any of us are here. We want to see Christ proclaimed, and if he gives us 50 students or he gives us five students, we want to be faithful with what he gives us. From a marketing point of view, we could say, well, if we get five, we've failed. But... Uh, I think I remember Major Thomas being uh, telling the story of when he was a 12-year-old at a Christian camp. There were hundreds of kids there, 
and the speaker just touched him as he as he spoke and he came to faith through that there's just that one kid 12 year old kid and this whole ministry of torchbearers is a result of that speaker preaching christ that day and that little boy hearing the gospel and first even though he grew up in a christian home the first time he had heard the gospel preached and he he went forward and accepted christ through prayer and the ministry of torchbearers essentially was born out of that so we got to be careful that we don't get hung up on the numbers we, the more numbers, well, it just means more people, and we love the people. We love the students, the opportunity to do life with them and disciple them and share with them. But, uh, yeah, we've got to be careful that our focus is not on anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm editor. Do you want to write your own book? I don't think anyone would buy it. If I did, I'd uh, not put my name on it. What do you call a pseudonym? I'd put a pseudonym on it. Wow. Uh, I just, I really like staying focused on what I'm here for. Um, there are some of those kind of projects that I'm looking at, but not for any other reason than we want to get the teaching out there. And whether we can make it into a, a course, a home study course, a, a book, a guide, perhaps the business ministry leadership course is very dear to me and I'm very passionate about it. And we run it as a 10 week program here. Next year, 2017, we'll run a one week in Switzerland. We may run it in Colorado also at some point, a version of it. Um, so other ways to get the material out there, to look at management, marketing, money, strategy, leadership, planning, communication, all from a, a biblical um, position is, is a wonderful opportunity. And I, I'd love to see what more we can do with that. Uh, it won't be my memoirs. It won't be my, uh, my autobiography, no. But who knows, if I can um, find the right way of doing something that keeps my eyes fixed on Jesus, then I wouldn't rule anything out. And how do you see the torchbearers in five or ten years? The torchbearers international? It's very interesting times. Our general director, Chris Thomas, is the eldest son of our founder, Major Ian Thomas. And uh, Chris's intention is to step down, or not retire, but finish his role. He'll be seven, he's 73 now, this coming June 2017. So the plan would be that we have a new international director then. We are, that'll be the first time we haven't had a Thomas, the head of this organization. At the same time, the head of our, um, our largest center, Cape Ray Hall in the UK, uh, Mark Thomas, he's a director there, he'll be stepping down also. So some real transition for, torchbearers. Um, it is going to be interesting the next five to ten years. Um, the, the family are an incredible family and there's still many of them involved but this is going to be a significant change. So as a fellowship there's there needs to be real unity. The centers were kind of glued together by Major Thomas over the years and subsequently by Chris. So uh, whatever happens next is going to be interesting. A lot of people are kind of watching interested as to see and myself included. I think it'll be an opportunity for um, some to step forward that maybe haven't been, maybe they've been in the shadows. Um, but there's other ministries that we are aware of that are very keen um, to partner with Torchbearers and support Torchbearers. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I still think there's a real need and a desire for Christ-centered, um, Bible-based teaching. Um, and I think the young people today, they are coming through often through public school with loads of questions. Um, as Christians, they're coming out with loads of questions that aren't being answered at school, they aren't being answered um, in church. So they look to places like this, and if they know people that have been here and can tell them, well, that's a good place to go and learn and ask questions, then uh, I still think there's a market for what we do as far as Bible school. Most centers offer conferences and camps and other events as well, but Bible school is really the staple for for most torchbearer centers, um, I would say. So we'll see, there may need to be some changes. Um, Switzerland are now offering a, a program for over 25s, just a three week course. Here and in Austria, we have an outdoor program and some other places are developing them now. We've got leadership programs dotted around. Uh, um, three of our North American centers and, uh, and, and other centers are offering leadership programs. Um, we have a boat in Greece that does six, seven weeks sailing around the islands doing Bible school. So maybe we need to look at other um, vehicles, not literally, but uh, ways to roll out Bible school. Uh, we've talked about different types of programs to meet the need of those that we want to um, yeah, uh, offer Bible school to. 
And if the demographic does change significantly, then we need to be um, humble enough to be able to change with it. They say if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. So if we're still doing what we were doing 20 years ago and society's changed, then we're going to struggle. So I think part of the challenge will be working with the centres that maybe uh, are not as uh, expectant of that and seeing how we can help them um, not change what they're doing as far as the message, but update methods maybe um, to communicate to their, their target groups of what they do and why they do it. So it's going to be really interesting. The next five to ten years, we, we've got ideas of where it could go, but who knows? The Lord might return by then. <laughs> yes, that's a good word at the end. Thanks a lot. Um, I'm Uta Müller, Uta's Media Talk.